hello everyone welcome back to the channel today's video is another sewing vlog I've been so pleased with the responses that I have been receiving for my past sewing vlogs I'm just overwhelmed uh, the sewing vlogs are the videos that I like to do the most and I'm just so pleased that so many of you out there are enjoying my sewing vlogs so today is sewing vlog number 16 or 17. I'll make sure that I put the number um, on the title of this video. More importantly, it is my video that I'm sharing with you for my uh, Valentine's Day dress. So I'm going to talk about the pattern that I'm going to be using for my Valentine's Day dress as well as the fabric that I'm going to be using. And as always in my sewing vlogs, I include the alterations and adjustments that I make, my likes, my dislikes, and my recommendations. So let's get started. So for this sewing project, I chose the Butterick B5850 pattern. This pattern, is classified as an easy pattern. The pattern that I have is the B5. So this pattern goes from sizes 8 to 16. So I did a mock-up for this pattern. And what I have found is that I need to basically make adjustments to the bust area now the alterations that i have made because i did do a mock-up and i did make alterations to the pattern itself but i did not make any further alterations so i only did the one mock-up so hopefully this will turn out okay so let me tell you the finished measurements as listed on the pattern's tissue paper. So for a size 16, it will be a 42 inches for the buzz and 33.5 inches for the waist. Now, uh, the skirt is a full skirt. I have found that I have to grade in between sizes, between a size 12 and a size 14 for my bust, because for the finished measurements for this pattern, for size 14 is a 40, and for size 12 is a 38. So I fall in between the 38 and the 40. So to give myself extra ease or room for ease, I definitely, I'm definitely going to grade in between sizes. So for the waist, I went with the 30. 3.5 which is the size 16. I do have to do adjustments to the arms because the widest area in the arms which is the black bicep area is 14 inches and that is the finished measurements. So I have to make sure that I include about two inches in my full bicep adjustment. I did uh, alter the pattern for the front and the back bodice already and I did do those adjustments right now I need to focus on my full bicep adjustments but let me show you the fabric that I have chosen for this project so the fabric that I selected for this project is this Ankara wax print and it's a black white and red print so it has a border at the bottom near the selvage and that border include roses going across the entire uh, length of, of the fabric. Um, the rest of the fabric above the selvage areas uh, is just uh, leaves, black leaves. This particular pattern calls for a zipper for the side and you all know how much I just don't like side zippers. So I am going to alter this pattern just a little bit and I'm going to put the zipper in the back. During this segment of the video, you will see me do a full bicep adjustment of this garment. Generally, I lay the pattern and trace it out on a, on a transparent piece of paper when I do my full bicep adjustments. 
After tracing the pattern, I place the original pattern underneath the transparent piece of paper. I have found that it's much easier to work with the transparent piece of paper because I can do whatever I want and the original pattern piece will be preserved. If I make a mistake, I can always go back and make any changes if necessary. After I do all my transfer of the marks and the notches, the pattern is cut out. And then I cut the pattern and split the pattern down the center of, of the pattern. And I start at this point. I leave about a quarter of an inch at each end so the pattern will have hinges. And this allows me to open up the pattern and make my adjustments evenly. I add another piece of transparent piece of paper underneath this new pattern so I can add my bicep adjustment underneath this pattern. I added about one and a half inches to the bicep area of this pattern and the paper underneath this pattern was taped in place so it doesn't move while I'm working with it. The way in which I do my bicep adjustment here is I split it down the center of the pattern lengthwise as well as across the width of the pattern as well and I always do it in the center so I put my bicep adjustment at the largest part of the bicep here. You want to keep it at one to one and a half inches. If you go over that, it's just not going to work. Um, as you can see, the pattern in the center, it bubbles up. So the more you stretch the pattern open, the more you're going to see like these bubbles. Right now I have pins in place on the pattern because I ran out of tape. So usually what I do after I do my adjustment to my pattern, this is like my working pattern. I take this pattern and I place it on a clean transparent sheet of paper and then I trace it out. So that way when I'm cutting out my fabric, I don't have to worry about, you know, movement in the pattern and things. So now that my full bicep adjustment is complete, I can trace out my new pattern and I can cut out my pattern pieces and get to work. This fabric has a border on both sides of the selvage and they are really large and I think they take up about 7 to 10 inches on each side. I found this to be quite annoying because I couldn't cut out my fabric in a way that would allow me to preserve some of my fabric for the future. So I was really annoyed with that. Um, because I had to cut out four panels for this garment, for the skirt, that took up a lot of the fabric because it's a gathered skirt and so the panels are really large. And I had to get creative with the sleeves, so I did use the border of the fabric for the sleeves as well. So the lower arm area has a border on the sleeves. The bodice for the garment, for the front and back, I used the center of the, the material, as you see me doing right here. And I think that it makes for a lovely contrast. However, I was not happy in the way in which I had to cut the, um, the pieces out because like I said, I have these uneven pieces to work with for the future. Hello everyone. Currently I am on steps number one, two, and three, which includes sewing the darts in the garment as well as basting the pleats in place at the shoulders and at the bottom of the front bodice. My primary reason for purchasing this pattern is because I love the 
complete detail in the shoulder of the garment as well as below near the waist. And I just thought that that was really cute. In hindsight, I feel like I would have made a different choice. I would have chose a pattern that was similar to this. I really like the fullness of the skirt. However, I don't like top stitching pleats in place. And that's what the pattern recommends. In the future, I think that if I were to make this garment again, I would definitely gather the material between the two notches at the top on the shoulder instead of doing pleats. Because I find that um, it just would look more flattering for me. I just don't like top stitching. I just don't like the look of it for pleats anyway. This skirt has a lot of skirt to it and it took me about 10 minutes to gather this skirt just with the machine and then after putting in the gathering stitches it took me about another I would say 15 minutes or so to actually gather the skirt by hand because the panels are so large. I mean, it is really big. It's a nice full skirt and I really like that about it. And I made a petticoat about two years ago that will look just absolutely lovely underneath of it. After I attach the bodice to the skirt, or the skirt to the bodice, I think that's how you say that, um, I will pull the lining over the seam allowance and I will attach the lining over the seam allowance and I'm going to use a whip stitch going across the entire width of the garment and tack it down in that way. I really like doing the whip stitch method instead of stitching in the ditch because I think it looks more vintage and this pattern looks vintage. Hello everyone, here's my progress so far. So far, I have completed the bodice, the skirt, and the sleeves. I did have to make some alterations in the waist area because it is a little bit more fitted than what I originally planned. So in order to give myself some more ease, I did a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance down the center front. And I'm also planning to do a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance down the center back as well. The instructions tell you to place the tie belt at the side seams. So you're supposed to sew the tie belt in the side seam of the garment. I have decided not to attach the tie belt to the garment just in case in the future I decide to wear the garment without the tie belt because I think that the tie belt is a great addition but I also think that the garment looked great without the tie belt as well so I'm not going to attach the tie belt. Also I am planning to attach fabric covered buttons down the center front of the garment down here and I am going to use the same print but I'm only going to use the roses here and that will be the color of the fabric covered buttons. I think that that will give the garment in the bodice area some more contrast. Originally I wanted to go with the 7 8 7 inch fabric covered buttons but I didn't have enough to complete this project so I ended up going with the 3 quarter inch fabric covered buttons. So I used five three quarter inch fabric covered buttons for this project. And making fabric covered buttons are really simple, very easy, especially if you have a fabric covered button kit. I purchased this kit from Joann's Fabrics and I think it was about three or four dollars with a coupon. So it's not that expensive and I think you get about 20 buttons. 
and it's really fun. I really love making fabric covered buttons and I think that it's a really great addition for this project. I have a tutorial on how to make fabric covered buttons. If you're interested in watching that, make sure you watch that um, video and you can learn more on how to make fabric covered buttons if you don't already know how. Let me show you my progress so far. Right now you are looking at the inside of the garment. So the black portion that is the lining of the garment. And right now I need to attach the sleeves to the garment and I have to whip stitch the bottom of the garment. I'm gonna get closer so you can see what I'm talking about. So I need to attach this part of the garment, the lining to the skirt of the garment. So, and I'm going to do that by uh, doing a whip stitch across the entire length of the garment. And I'm going to attach it to the seam allowance under here. I inserted an invisible zipper at the back. After I do all of these things that I mentioned, so do the whip stitching, attach the sleeve. I need to hem the bottom of the skirt. So as you can see here, I kept the um, a selvage. So I'm just going to fold that over. And I think I'm going to do a one and a quarter inch hem allowance. So I'll just fold that over and that'll be part of the hem because I really love this black border here. So yeah, everything is coming along great. Doing whip stitches on a garment is a very daunting task for me. However, I really love the overall look and finish of a good whip stitch. Mostly when I try to stitch in the ditch, I find that the stitches on the opposite end always come out uneven and they just don't look all that great to me. And so for that very reason, I like to do the whip stitch, even if it's very daunting and it hurts my hands and it takes very long. Um, so I just whip stitch the width of the garment and I also whip stitch the length of the garment going down the center back, encasing the zipper between the shell of the garment and the lining. And this is what the whip stitches look like. And here is the final dress and the reveal.